Guys, what a fantastic article that I found today. Actually, someone sent me. Let, let me let me credit you guys because I love you for sending me these beautiful, beautiful articles. Keep them in the very, very big articles. I love them. Love them. We all love them. All these articles. Beautiful articles. Let me, it's, yeah. Surajit Das sent me this article today. Beautiful, beautiful, tremendously beautiful. And this discusses Postgres, which I am trying to focus my energy on. As you know, I work with many databases on my daily work, 9 to 5. And when I have time, I try to kind of niche down into one database. Just because you, you're at the end of the day, yeah, you understand how things work in a certain database, but you appreciate how other database platforms do the work. And uh, you have at the end of the day, you have to focus on something, right? It's like uh, between SAP HANA, between Postgres, between SQL Server, between Oracle, I, I found myself that I'm spreading myself too thin, right? It's like, oh, Oracle does that, but Postgres doesn't. Let's just focus on one. It will, it, it, it's, it's always a better idea. It's, that, does, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't l read and l learn about how other stuff do. I'm still doing that, right? I'm still focusing just relational. I know nothing. Very, very little on NoSQL, and I'm not intending to go there yet, right? So just, just that, just focusing on focusing on database engineering, just focusing focusing on relational databases, and just focusing on certain databases, right? Specifically, raw column store on uh, on OLTP, right? Not OLAP, just just the transactional aspect. That's my what I try to specify in, right? That tells you, man, I didn't even get to the article. Jesus, right? Are you still watching? Hopefully you're still watching. Let's get to the article and we'll see this. It was written yesterday, February 1st, uh, 2021. Oh, look at that. He writes the, the day first, like the rest of the world. Once I, when, whenever I came to the United States, I flipped now. Now I write the month. I say the month first and then the day, right? And uh, now people make fun of me. I use I use uh, I used to make fun of uh, people who do that, but now people make fun of me because I flipped. I <laughs> just anyway the unexpected find that freed twenty gigabyte of unused index space and twenty gigabyte guys you can free up this much. Is it? I wasn't surprised. I thought it will be two hundred, but still it's really good. So some of the stuff that mentioned in this article I already knew. But some of them were new to me, and that's what I want to focus in. So we'll go through the article. I'm, I'm going to skim it for you. I'm going to read the parts that I'm interested in here. And then go through the steps. What, what Haki Benita, badass name, uh, might I say, right? And uh, what did they do? What did they do to free up all this stuff? Let's go ahead. Some of the stuff are unexpected, they say. Very interesting. Let's go. Every few months, we get an alert from our database monitoring to warn us that we are about to run out of space. Usually, we just provision more storage and forget about it. But this time, we were under quarantine. And the system is in question was under less load than usual. We thought this is a good opportunity to do some cleanups that would otherwise be much more challenging. What did you guys do? To start from the end, we end up freeing more than 70 gigabyte of unoptimized, unutilized space without dropping a single index or deleting any data. That's good, right? Sometimes you need to delete and drop indexes that you don't use, and then they show how to do that, but that's good. But the, the, what, they, what the interesting part is that they free out two gigabyte of unused index values, and some of that thing was actually literally unused, and they didn't know it was unused. Let's go ahead. Look, look, look at this beautiful graph. Their graphs are amazing. So they started at 35 gigs, jumped to 60 gigs, and then down a little bit. That tells me maybe there's an auto vacuum or something like that. That drop it a little bit down. I don't think I have to vacuum. I have to clear, free up space. That's vacuum full frees up some space, right? So it comes back to a little bit 63 gigabyte and goes down and then hoop. They found this. There's okay. Oh, so this is the free space. It's flipped. Okay, higher means more free space. Okay, got it. <laughs> All right, I, I was confused for a second. All right, let's go through this. The usual suspect, the find, and bonus. 
migrating with uh, Django RM. You, you are my opinion when, when it comes to RM, guys. I don't have anything against them, but I just don't like to use something that kind of hides what the database about. But those guys know what they're doing. So they use ORM because they know how they work. I'm against using ORMs that does magic for you and you have no idea what it's doing. That's what I'm against, right? So let's be very clear. So usual, what is the usual suspect? Unused indexes. So here's a query that tells you an index that has not been hit at all. And uh, since the last time you, you analyze, it will tell you, hey, index scan were zero, uh, tuple read zero, and tuple fetch zero. If, if you see an index for a month that hasn't been hit, your application is either not running, right? Which is, which would be a disaster. <laughs> or your, your index is not being used. So if your index is not being used, kill it, drop it, right? That doesn't mean you cannot query. You can still query. Your, your, your query is going to be a little bit slower. Who cares? You're not executing that query anyway. That uh, as frequent. So might as well just kill. So that's what they did. So hey, let's identify those stuff. Let's, uh, let's just remove those indexes that is not being used. All right, so they, they show you how to do that. The second one, index and table bloat. The next suspect is bloat. So guys, uh, I'm not gonna read this, but the idea of, and I talked about many times, Postgres, when you edit, when you update, when you delete, it creates a copy of the row and inserts a new brand new row, while the, the row that is in question remains uh, uh, there for MVCC reasons, for multi-version concurrency control. So that existing transaction that's still reading while that operation happened can still access that row if needed. That is very well known uh, design in Postgres. Okay, But that creates bloat because now all of these uh, tuples, especially when they are not used, when those old transactions are just dead or done, committed or rolled back, there's no reason to have those. So, so you'll end up with bloat entries on the, in the table and bloat entries in the index. How do you fix both? Very simple. You do a re-index on the index itself to remove the, uh, the entries in the index, right? And you do, uh, uh, obviously, when you do a re-index to remove those bloats, right? Uh, that will lock the table. <laughs> Locking the table in production is not a good idea. I just made a video about concurrently, by the way. Just check it out here if, you, if you're interested. So re-index index concurrently allow you to do this in parallel while write says hello. And I, I gotta say, I love those graphics. Woo! You guys rock on this. Look at this. So these are the deleted entry that we're still pointing to, but they do, they they exist, right? Physically in the desk, but they are essentially logically dead. Nobody is reading and uh, they are just there for historical reasons for those transactions that are running to keep reading from them. But once those transactions are done, you, you're free to do them. So auto vacuum clean this up, but what they do, what they didn't mention here, uh, auto vacuum will remove those so you can write in them again with view va other values, but it will not it will not physically return the space back to disk, right? That's what full vacuum is for, right? And again, uh, we're gonna explain this uh, in a minute. They, they explain, uh, I think this shows it somewhere here. Uh, I knew about this. I talked about the Postgres 13 features, which is uh, index deduplication, which is by default, when you use Postgres 13, you have index deduplication. So that means if, if you're indexing a value that is very repeated in the table, right? Let's say, I don't know, uh, male versus female, uh, Postgres 13, before Postgres 13, it was like a new entry for every value. Postgres 13 groups them together. They do deduplicate things, which is very, very efficient, right? So they said, hey, they have an old value and they re-indexed it in Postgres 13 and took advantage of that. This is the default, by the way. So they, you don't have to add this. It's just, you get it for free. Very, very interesting. I'm gonna leave the article for you guys to read, but this is very interesting. They show the saving. Good, good saving. 21 megs to, uh, uh, what, six megs? That is good. Cleaning bloat and table, that's what I just uh, explained. So we were talking about indexing. Now it's the table itself. As you start deleting, updating, you'll see having these values. Auto vacuum will free them up, but Postgres is still essentially occupying that space. You can still write into them. A future update will reuse the claim these pages, right? But if you want to just just uh, rebuild the whole thing and drop it to the table to, to free space to actually 
compacted like this, remove that bloat physically, you have to do a full uh, vacuum full, right? Which will lock the table. So you, you're very careful with this, right? Once you do that, nobody can write to the table. And I believe nobody can read even. I might be wrong. Here's another extension that they use to help identify and uh, free space up, which is very, very good. And then here's the find. And I, I was, so, I, got, I gotta be, I gotta be honest. I was surprised with this, right? So the aha moments are like, while we're looking at the sizes of the indexes, after we finished rebuilding them, an interesting thing caught our eye. One of our largest tables stored transactional data. In our system, after a payment is made, the user can choose to cancel or refund. This is not happening very often, and only a fraction of transaction end up being canceled. In our transaction, there are foreign keys to both purchasing user and canceling user. So there is a foreign key that points to a canceling user. And if you don't have a, this transaction is not canceled, what will be the value of the canceling user? It will be null, right? There is no value, right? There is no user that canceled this. So you can see that this is the table here. The purchasing user is always filled, but the canceling user is almost always null, right? And here's what I didn't know. And thank you, Hacky, for... Uh, uh, is it in there, Hacky? Hacky. Hacky this. Thank you, Hacky, for pointing this out. When you create an index, there is an index on canceling user. Guess what? It's like... I, I came with the same background. They are coming from Oracle. And I am coming also from Oracle. That was the first database that I learned. And in, by default, Oracle does not index nulls. And I didn't know that Postgres actually index nulls. So the size, we're, they are taking into value the nulls in the index, which almost nobody will ever query where canceling user equal null. That is the query that you will never execute. And here's something I also learned. Thank you so much. This is something called partial index. You can create an index with a where close. What, 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 what? I was like, what? What? And you, some of you might say, Hussein, you're an idiot. Of course you can create an index with a, with a where close. Well, I didn't know that, okay? I just learned something new. Thank you again, Sujit, for sending me this beautiful article. Keep, 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 keep those up. Keep those beautiful articles up. So if your index is 99% null values, it's just, it has like one gig worth of data, uh, worth of junk, essentially. Just recreate the index. They re dropped the index and recreated it with a word close that is, a, hey, let's just capture the not null value. And I can think of many scenarios where I can create an index on only the values that I will be searching for. I know the field will have values uh, certain values and i know i know i have, I have this all the time i have like a, a default value of unknown for example right and unknown almost we never search on unknown we always search on other values that actual unique values right so i want to create an index without the unknowns because unknown will take most of the of the field and i don't care about those right so you can create an index without the unknown field Powerful stuff, powerful stuff. So they show you the, the stuff and then they show you how they, they started using partial indexes and all that stuff. Very, very, very cool stuff. They, they showed their, their expenses free space. Obviously, guys, I mean, I come from an enterprise. I work for enterprises. Most of the times, my, my most work is enterprise only. I, came from, I worked for an enterprise company back in Bahrain, government entity. So I hope most... Definitely, we always use Oracle and enterprise software. So, disk space is not really a big deal for us because it's everything is in, on premise. So, just order more disk, right? But if you're on the cloud and you are being, uh, you pay for these twenty gig, thirty, seventy, eight hundred gigs that nobody's using, it's it's worth to clean up, clean those up. So it's really good. So here's a but. Let's let's read those up. Migrating with Django RM. I didn't read this part, so I'm gonna read it with you. Let's see, let's see the value here. The story is taken from large application built with Django. To put the above technique to practice with Django, there are several no, uh, things to note. Prevent implicit creation of indexes on foreign keys. 
unless you explicitly set db index equal false django will implicitly create a b tree that is what i'm talking about guys i do not like magic this is magic to me right if you don't understand how things work right orms and jungle all this stuff will try to to be smart and try to do things for you on, uh, without implicitly and i do not like this i like my work to be explicit i like when a database i tell it to do something it does i don't like to tell a black box to do something and it does x y z x a b c d right that i didn't ask it to do just to save me some time no 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 right so they found out this hey uh, we're creating index don't don't create an index so they they found out those obviously there must be some some flags to tell you all this stuff and and if these are shown and clear and explicit i'm i'm okay with that but if something happened under the table ugh. look at this how do i know there's a property called db index equal false right so yeah here's the thing Nullable foreign keys are good candidate for a partial index. That's a good idea, right? Because if you have foreign keys and they are nullable, and if, especially if that foreign key is not populated most of the time, such as the canceling user, their canceling user, then it's a good idea to do a partial uh, index. So that's very, very useful. So a lot of other useful stuff here. Uh, drop full index, uh, drop full indexes, replace them, fake the migration. I don't know what that means, really. Again, you might agree, disagree or agree with me. If you are an expert and you know how Django works and all these ORMs, by all means, you can use them, right? My beef with all this stuff is just bloat, in my opinion. It's just things that try to be smart and then you shoot yourself in the foot most of the time. We've seen this come and go all the time. Again, like, guys, uh, if you disagree with me, anything I say, just let me know in the comment section because I'm, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe say, hey, no, Hussein, you're wrong about Django. Conclusion, optimizing disk storage uh, parameters and configuration can only affect performance so much. At some point, to squeeze the final drop of performance, you need to make changes to the underlying object. In this case, it was the index definition. To sum up the process we took, to clear as much storage as we need, removed and used indexes, repack the indexes utilize partial indexes hopefully this is this is really good i really enjoy this article guys this is pretty good i'm gonna reference it below thank you again for uh, sharing this article i'm gonna see you on the next one keep sending me those beautiful beautiful articles i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye